Hello aviators, Sky here. And today, not an expensive aircraft and not a huge rocket, but another, no less common participant of air traffic, a helicopter got caught into our wide aviation nets. Finally. But we will begin our journey into the world of rotorcraft, not from some gorgeous flagship or fearsome combat gunship, but from a completely new and incredibly charming machine that we met at Hello Russia 2019 exhibition in Moscow. Kurti Zephyr is a light two-seat helicopter being created by Kurti Aerospace basically at this moment. Probably everything about this machine is new. Design, power plant, avionics, even the manufacturer is new. The nice design and name, of course, are clearly hinting. Our today's hero is Italian. Let's get acquainted. The helicopter is completely new, so its history would fit into a one-minute video. But since it was made by the hands unfamiliar to most, I think it is worthwhile to first tell about those hands. Despite the fact that Kurti Airspace has appeared among the aircraft manufacturers just recently, the company itself cannot be called a new one. It was founded in the town of Imola, in the northeastern Italy, by the entrepreneur Libero Curti in 1955. Initially, the company was engaged in the production of spare parts for textile and agricultural equipment, but its competences were expanding. In the 1970s, the company began working with large industrial structures, energy and aviation companies. And at the turn of the 21st century, Kurti became a fairly serious subcontractor, engaged in active research and supplying a variety of products for various purposes. In aviation, these were mainly details, simple and complex, made of composites and various metals, including titanium. When you hear such a story, a thought may occur. An advanced technological company with highly qualified personnel in its assets, supplying such corporations as Leonardo and Piaggio with a huge number of elements. Why not start making products of their own? Step into the spotlight, so to speak. Curti's debut on this stage was the Zephyr helicopter. Firstly, I must say a bit about its exotic name. The word comes from the name of the warm west wind, blowing in southern Europe from the Atlantic in spring and summer. This wind is known as Ponente or Zephyr. The idea of creating a light helicopter seemed quite logical. Creating something big and complicated was too risky, and in Europe, besides them, they were already at least Leonardo and Airbus helicopters. Getting into a head-on competition with them is crazy. On the other hand, the company's technology, competences and capacities may well be enough for a lightweight model. It is worth noting that a similar idea came to other aviators too, but Kurti calculated their strengths and took a step towards more active innovations. Let's see what kind of innovations those are. According to the general layout, the Kurti Zephyr is quite a classic light helicopter. In terms of size, it is very modest. In length, without the rotor, it reaches 6.8 meters. The width is 1.6 meters, and its height in the base is 2.5 meters. The rotor is equipped with two composite blades, below it the hub, that's being held by the swash plate. The rotor diameter is 7.6 meters. Here, in principle, the design is quite ordinary, everything is simplified as much as possible, although it is always nice to see the dynamics of inside mechanisms. The tail rotor is in its place. Two small blades with a controlled pitch are installed on open units connected directly to the tail shaft. To simplify the design, they did not mount it on a tail keel. The rotor diameter is approximately 1.2 meters. Although the keel is still here, as well as the horizontal stabilizer located on the opposite side from the rotor. They are doing their job, plus the top side of the keel serves as a platform for lights and communication devices, and on its lower part a flexible protective heel is installed, so that the rotor wouldn't suddenly meet the ground. An interesting point, the helicopter has a luggage compartment, for such light models a little unusual. Access to the trunk opens through two hatches behind the cabin. It has a volume of 320 liters, although there is an idea to offer an optional fuel tank here, in addition to the 120 liter main tank. Less bags, longer range. Let's dive into the cabin. It is quite small, designed for two people. Here we immediately understand that this is an Italian machine. A sleek design, leather lining on many elements, pretty high quality plastics, and all kinds of cool little things. Everything looks as light as possible. 
There's even a slight optical illusion. With such a design and such a color, the cockpit looks pretty large, although the control stick can be cramped at the feet, if the pilot is a big person. Although this is just a prototype, and a number of additional changes are supposed to be applied on the following machines to solve these issues. On the other hand, the feeling of spaciousness improves the mood. All those gloomy cabins filled with equipment can be a bit depressing, even if they are in fact much larger. Plus, the glazing is quite wide, there isn't even a sim strip on the windshield. The dashboard is very simple and because of that also looks incredibly cute. The piloting is fairly automated, the engine is controlled by the FedEx system. Most of the information is shown on the display, although they did not completely abandon the good old analog devices. In the cockpit there are two classic cyclic sticks with a rigid connection with each other. The rest of the controls, pedals and the collective pitch lever are also in their places. Everything is familiar to any helicopter pilot, but given the lightness and quality, Zephyr promises very simple piloting. The seats are classic and quite comfortable, equipped with energy absorbing mechanisms in case there is a rough landing. Kurti engineers, though carried away by the design, do not forget about the rules. The structure of the helicopter and its elements are initially created keeping in mind the regulatory standards for this type of aircraft. This at the very least simplifies certification. Ok, enough general descriptions. Let's now find out why Kurti decided they could conquer the world of light helicopters. After all, you won't fly very far just on the cute design. The first and most striking innovation is the safety bonus. Kurti engineers placed a small container above the rotor. Inside of it a rescue parachute is packed, created in cooperation with the German Junkers Pro Fly. In the world of light planes such a solution is already popular, but for a helicopter it is exotic. In the event of a technical failure, if auto rotation does not help or it's not possible to land the helicopter normally, you can use this emergency system. The parachute is deployed and the helicopter, being quite light, softly lands. Well, maybe not quite softly, but passengers should be ok. Meanwhile the rotors are getting locked to prevent them from hitting the ground or injuring anyone. It only looks cool in the movies. The system has already been tested on a real prototype, though it was an unmanned version. In 2018, at the testing ground, the helicopter was raised to a height of 300 meters, accelerated to 30 knots and the engine was shut down. The parachute was released and by the time of the landing, the speed of the helicopter decreased to approximately 27 km per hour or nearly 17 miles per hour. The test showed that the shock was absorbed by the chassis and the seats. The situation is unpleasant. There are scuffs on the hull and now you have to file for insurance, but there is a result. If after a helicopter crash the worst consequences is the boring paperwork, then the job is done. You might think that a helicopter after such a fall cannot be restored, but the machine from the exhibition that you see is the one that was dropped in that test. The system is quite simple and small. The container adds to the helicopter about 40 centimeters or 16 inches of height. This of course is the most striking innovation and the company's representatives are actively advertising it. However, the features don't end there. Like I said, the helicopter is Italian and in design it looks at its fellow road-based sports countrymen. And what do the guys from the sport car industry love to do? That's right, reduce the mass. Here Kurti decided not to limit themselves. Most of the structure is made of composites and by the most I mean literally everything that's possible. Except maybe the power plant and the critical structure and control elements are metal, even the chassis is made of carbon. Visually this solution allowed to make Zephyr so beautiful, complex shapes, no seams or rivets, gorgeous. However because of this the helicopter may seem like a toy and there is not enough rigidity in some places, but it's not so critical and can be fixed. After all we are working around a prototype, not a serious product. In addition this is a clear victory over the excess mass. The maximum takeoff weight of the helicopter with all the add-ons, fuel, cargo and passengers is just 700 kilograms. The third innovation of Zephyr is the engine. The first guess would be some classic piston aviation motor, this is almost standard for ultralight helicopters. But no, we peek under the hood and see a turbine. The power plant of the Zephyr helicopter is represented by one TS-100 turboshaft engine from the Czech PBS Velka Bitesh. One might ask, what is this Czech TS-100? 
This engine was recently created just for ultralight machines. It gives 141 horsepower in normal flight and squeezes up to 241 at maximum modes. Why a turboshaft engine, not a piston one? Wait, this baby weighs only 60 kilograms or 132 pounds. A piston engine with the same performance at best would weigh twice as much, plus the size and simplicity of design. Even inside a small machine like Zephyr, this power plant with all the elements seems tiny. Besides, thanks to this decision, the luggage compartment was added to the helicopter. Fuel consumption, yes, more than that of the piston counterparts. But again, kerosene is cheaper, and saving on the mass of the power plant gives more pros than cons. However, the engine is completely new, so there may be some undiscovered problems. And it is also more expensive. In terms of flying qualities, it should be able to accelerate the helicopter to 161 km per hour or 87 knots at cruise speed and 189 km per hour or 102 knots maximum speeds, maintain hovering at an altitude of 4000 meters or 13000 feet and ride passengers in just 2 hours at a range of over 300 km or 172 nautical miles. How will it show itself in practice? Time will tell. And now to more practical issues. When, where and how much. So the Kurti Zephyr helicopter by the summer of 2019 is in the final stages of certification. It is assumed that in the near future it will receive permission from Deutsche Ultralight Flugverband, the DULV, the German Association of Ultralight Aviation. And then from the tough guys from EASA. Sales will begin immediately. Oh yes, how much? The estimated cost of this machine will probably hover around $500,000. Not very cheap. But this is a game of combining many factors and performances. So again, time will tell, client will judge. We just have to wait. This is how we got to meet the world of helicopters today. Zephyr opened it for us. And now we can walk and enjoy the views. Welcome. And that's all for today. Fast flights and soft landings to you.